Jesus is the answer for the world today. Praise God. Good afternoon, saints of God. My name is Reverend Annie Cooper, and today's devotional deals with visions. But before I go into it, I would like to pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace, I thank you, Lord, for choosing to use me as an oracle of yours, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would give me the wisdom and the strategy, Lord God, to speak your word, O oh God, Lord Father, in excellent of spirit, according to your will and what you desire to share with your people. I pray that their hearts would be blessed, O oh God, their minds would be renewed, O oh God, and they would be encouraged and strengthened. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. According to Britannica Dictionary, the word vision means something that you imagine, a picture that you see in your mind. Imagine what it would be like in the presence of the Most High God. And in Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3, verses 2 to 3, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write that vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And as I read also in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. As I was studying this, the Lord gave me that many of his people are perishing in this time and this season because they do not have a vision of what eternity is like. When God gives us a uh, vision, either an individual, a group, or a nation, that vision is for good of all of the people. God has given his people a vision of eternity as he wrote in the Bible. This is some of the experiences we have about God's vision. It is for an appointed time. It's not going to happen when we desire it to happen because we live in a microscopic, a mi I'm sorry, in a microwave society. We want everything yesterday. God's timing is perfect and excellent. Sometimes it may look like this vision is a lie and it's unattainable. But Habakkuk said, wait for it. When you think it will never happen, then God will begin, will bring it to pass. When we think that this vision would never happen, God will begin to bring it to pass. We ought to wait upon that vision. Why? Because when we have a vision of the future, when we have a vision of the things that God has promised us and he promised that he's going away and he's going to prepare a place for us and he's going to come again to receive us unto himself. So that is a vision we should have in our mind. He described what heaven looks like. I believe it is in Revelation. He described what heaven looks like. There would be streets of gold. We ought to hold on to that vision of being able able to spend eternity with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He said, the vision will not lie. Sometimes it seems that that vision is unattainable because there is so much that is coming up against the saints of God, especially in this season that many times we have to trust the Holy Spirit to rekindle that fire, that one spark in our hearts and in our minds, in our spirit and in our soul, that one spark and make it become a Torah in phono so that we can hold on to the vision. In the waiting, there is a preparation process. Everything that we have to wait for, everything that is important, everything that is needed, we have to wait upon it. For God is preparing you and I for the manifestation of the vision. He cannot give us that vision unless we are prepared to receive that vision. The vision may have but for a, for a moment. 
It may hide, I'm sorry, the vision may hide, but for a moment, but it will soon be revealed. What does it mean? It means that just as when a woman is pregnant, her husband doesn't know about it, neither does she know about it until it is revealed. I'm using pregnancy as an example because it is hidden. And then when it is revealed, after several months, then the others, the world, other people knows about that pregnancy. It is the same with a vision. Wait, it is already planted. The seed of the vision is already planted in your spirit man. So as you wait for the manifestation of the vision, it will come to pass in a moment of time. It will be revealed. Before the appointed time of the manifestation of the vision, you may weep as a woman in labor, but it shall not be a labor of pain, misery, or sorrow, but a labor of joy. Again, just as when once someone is pregnant, a woman is pregnant, the season of labor, when you are going through that laboring process, when you are going through the sickness and there is tears because your hormones are out of whack, but the labor, when the baby is born, there is joy. It is the same with a vision. As you wait upon it, as the vision begins to multiply and increase, as your faith begins to believe and to hope for that vision that God has given unto you to come to pass. It may be a vision for your children. It may be a vision for a home. It may be a vision for your good health. It may be a vision for a job or something that God has promised that he would give unto you. So wait upon that vision. It will soon be manifested. And when it is manifested, it would not be in, in sorrow. It would not be in pain, nor will it be in misery, but it would be in a labor of love. And if there is no price to pay, there will be no vision. You pay the price of waiting upon that vision, of holding to God's unchanging hand, of seeking him in prayer, in praise, in worship, and believing that he would bring that vision to pass. Because that vision, tarry, it does not mean that it would not come to pass. Hold on to that vision. Look unto the Lord to bring that vision to pass. Look unto him so that he would bring it to pass. Um, as the price you are paying right now is the waiting process on that vision to pass and it will come to pass. God's vision will always come to pass. It will always come to pass because he is not like man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he needs to repent. So when he speaks something into our lives, into our heart, into our spirit man, he will bring it to pass. It comes to pass in his timing. Remember, it is not our timing. It is not anyone else's timing. It is not the pastor's timing. It is not any other timing but God's timing. And God's timing is perfect. It is said that everything that we sow, we will reap. When God brings that vision to pass, great will be your joy. You will experience blessings, blessings untold. You will experience promotions, places that you didn't even think was possible for you to go or places that you didn't even think that was possible for you to acquire. You would receive it. Then you would um, receive the blessing of increase and abundance, laughter and peace all combined together to bring when that vision come to pass that those around you will notice all the blessings that God has given you because you waited upon the vision because the vision when it tarried you did not give up sometimes when the God is opening the door to let the vision into the situation to be manifested we close the door by saying it is not going to come to pass it never will and we don't know why we are waiting don't do that wait upon that vision because God is faithful and he is true to bring that vision to pass. And those that are around you will notice all these blessings. So believe God and stand in faith. This is the time for every vision God has given you to be fulfilled. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, hold fast to that vision. Don't let it go. This is the time and the season when God is working miracles, when he is bringing visions to pass. So hold on to your vision, trust God, believe him, and don't let go of the vision, for he will bring it to pass. In Jesus' name, to the glory of God. Amen. And for those of you who do not 
not know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, I pray that you would receive him as your personal Lord and Savior as you pray this prayer. Eternal God and everlasting Father, as I come before you, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me and make me as white as snow. I come before you with the vision of spending eternity with you. So Lord God, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you said if I do that, I will be saved. So I thank you for my salvation even right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he lift his countenance up before you and grant you sweet shalom. God bless you all saints.